welcome to Goblin Tech. We've got a Ryzen system here that I built. I've been using it for a couple weeks now, and there's no Intel parts, so AMD fanboys, give me a like. We got RX 480 graphics card, Ryzen 1600X. You know, this thing is fast, handles everything I throw at it. High settings, smooth as silk, velvety smooth, if you will. I think I'll call it Silicon Velvet. That sounds good to me. So stay tuned and we'll show you what's inside. We're building on the Gigabyte B350M. It's micro ATX form factor board. The Ryzen 1600X chip. And Corsair sent me my AM4 mounting bracket for the H100i V2. Parked next to the Corsair Vengeance DDR4. 3000 megahertz cast latency. Going to be booting Windows from Western Digital Black, and this sweet setup. Let's go to this modified Cooler Master Silencio 352. Let's go ahead and install this Corsair H100i V2. Corsair did a really good job of putting this uh, thermal paste on here, but I'm going to clean it off and use some Arctic Solar 5 instead. The internet swears up and down that it's very effective, so I know I'm going to get good performance out of that. Stick with that instead, this random question mark paste. It is literally touching, but it went in pretty smooth, so I think I'm going to be okay. And a note to uh, contradict my earlier setup where I originally had this pump-oriented 90 degrees clockwise, but because of the hose routing for the radiator, it was not, it didn't feel too good. So I gave it a little bit extra length and easier routing. And, you know, routing, routing the wires around the pump worked out pretty well. Particularly the, uh, the uh, CPU fan header wire. It's actually wrapped around and underneath the USB port on the side of the pump before it finally plugs in up there. I am one for reading manuals. I did. And I found some disappointing information about the, uh, the front panel I.O. for this case. The instructions that came with the Cooler Master Silencio 352 and they told me that if these pinouts do not exactly match what is on the motherboard, then to not use them because it can damage the motherboard. So looking at this right here, I can already see that the VBUS and ID some SSTX and SSRX and D pins are not oriented in the same way. So I won't be able to use the front 3.0 header with this motherboard. Now I think we all know what has to be done. So much for front panel USB 3.0. At least it's not current. Another strike for the Cooler Master case. The high definition audio for the front panel is using the Intel standard, so that is not going to work. I've already checked. AC97 looks promising. The odd numbered pins seem to line up pretty well, as long as mic bias is the same as mic power. But we're also seeing that 6 and 10 have nothing going on there. But for this header, 6 and 10 are return R and return L. Uh, Maybe if I take the wires out, it won't damage anything. I can try that. Maybe I just don't have front audio, not the end of the world. Uh, and at least I still have USB 2.0. Now on to cable management. In the Cooler Master 352, we did have some minor difficulties. There's some windows to work with, some hold downs to work with, a little bit of space behind the motherboard tray. Uh, it's pretty much all just just enough to make it all work. Overall, it did take a little bit of extra time and effort, but it came out really good. I like this card installed with the power cables routed. Now this was kind
kind of difficult because I wanted to use one cable, one SATA power cable to get all three, the three and a half and the two SSDs. Managed to do it and a lot of power goes to the same place and making making the data cable loop up through here and come down in here to go underneath the other solid state drive to plug into the header for SATA which is right here yeah that was that was a tricky one especially since we have you know the main power for the motherboard going through here we have graphics card power going in through here and just really really tight spaces you can see that the SATA cable has been given two 90 degree angles to plug in and it looks like it's under a bit of stress but I've already tested it and it functions no problems as of yet and if I can keep this wire out of the way I have enough space in here to get the final SATA cable for the mechanical drive. This is what my back-end cable management ends up looking like. Got most of the power cables coming up from under the air ramp out of the power supply up in, you know, into their various passageways. <clears throat> You've got the fans just kind of like secured here as best as I could. Saddle data wire coming in through here all wonky behind the SSD to get in here. And the rest of it, I've, um, yeah, I've got a fairly large amount of uh, cables just bundled in right in here. Let's get some extra light to see. Yeah, there's, there's a, that wire tie right there in the middle, right here, that's uh, holding it all down in there all nice. Looks even better from the RX 480 GTR black edition. Although you're pretty, you look really good in this case, probably shouldn't have put you in so soon. I've been trying to work on my cable management. I've got my currently useless USB 3.0 wires tucked in above the radiator, and I've got some SATA cables uh, tucked behind the radiator. This thing, this radiator has made for a very good hiding place. I'm gonna try and hide more things down behind it over on that side. And there's a shot from the front without the graphics card. And here's a couple notes on what I found when I was installing the exhaust fans. One of my shipped in from China purchases is just some anti-vibration gaskets for the Cooler Master True Quiet fans or whatever they give you. We'll see if that helps. Well, I'm not going to bother to check, but yeah, it's like $4. Another perk of the anti-vibration gasket is that in this case it fits so tightly in here that with no screws, I had to really force this in. It's not coming back out. <laughs> I'm going to put some screws in it, though, just to be sure. The problem that I've found with this tight squeeze is that the gasket does not want to stay where it belongs, and I really don't like it being there, so I'm going to fix that. Thus far, the easiest bit of cable management is just not even to unwrap these cords and just plug them in. I have a fan splitter going in here, so... That is just the perfect length. You just tuck all of this right in here above this other fan here. Get those wires a good tuck in there. And I think we'll find some way of securing that better just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. 
even the top exhaust fan or radiator, whatever you're using in this Cooler Master case, uh, don't just screw it in because this is a removable and cleanable filter. So lift it up before you start putting the screws in instead of being a dummy like me. In this next clip, I show you in one take, one try, first time, putting on the rear cover. Now, I know that some people had issues installing the rear cover for this case, and I want to just point out that having the flat cables with my uh, Cooler Master power supply, that really helped. That made this go much easier. Now, just to showcase how easy it is to actually put this side cover back on, even with all of that mess of wire back there. There we go. What, 20 seconds, standing up, not even applying weight to it. All right, we got it together, we got it windows installed. Let's see how this thing boots off an NVMe. Quick, this thing can boot up. Already got windows installed. And these uh, sweet parts, amongst many others. Not sure if you can hear the beep and boops and wind noises. seconds to log in and within 40 ready to do things and like instantaneous love it that was silicon velvet i really enjoy building it you know it's really paid off all the time and effort going into researching and watching new egg for the deals so if you want to see more about it benchmarking detailed parts list overclocking. Let me know. I'll make it happen.